Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, nā mai haere mai, ki te whaitua whakapauhu o Aotearoa, ko Tony Simons taku ingoa. On behalf of ARA and the New Zealand Broadcasting School, we are honoured uh, to have been chosen as the venue for an announcement that we've been waiting for for some time. Um, thank you to our students, graduates and staff who are here today. This is about your futures, um, but uh, more than that, it's important for all young New Zealanders and how we, and how we see ourselves in the world and future through the stories that we share. Choosing Ara to make this announcement tells me the Minister knows good media training and education is important for the future of public media. So on that note, please welcome back to his alma mater, the Minister of Broadcasting, the Honourable Chris Farfoy. Um, Tony, can I thank you uh, to the, uh, you and the New Zealand Broadcasting School here at uh, Ara for um, hosting us today here for this announcement. Um, acknowledge all your students and staff uh, that are here uh, and also uh, our friends in the media. I also want to take this opportunity to um, uh, mark the passing of Emma Jolliffe, who's um, a colleague of uh, our News Hub family. So um, our thoughts um, with her colleagues uh, and also obviously with her family, uh, who I think are based uh, in Wellington. Um, Tony, thank you. Um, 20 years ago, I started my broadcasting um, journey here. Um, so it's nice to be able to come here uh, uh, in a very privileged position as, as the Broadcasting Minister uh, to make um, an announcement around how we want to strengthen uh, public media. A lot has changed in media in the last 20 years, a lot has changed uh, in media in the last five years. There are constant challenges for our public media and uh, our commercial media to traverse um, and the students that are here are going to be in that sector. Um, uh, they're going to have children who will be consuming uh, that content um, and they're going to be uh, working uh, on platforms uh, that were vastly different 20 years ago uh, and also five years ago. So it's important um, that we come here to talk about how we hope to reshape uh, their sector, uh, given the challenges that it has, uh, importantly, to ensure, as you said, Tony, some of those quintessentially important New Zealand stories continue uh, to get told. A strong and independent media is an important part of our democracy and our sense of identity as a nation and increased competition from overseas and changes to the way that people are accessing content uh, are putting pressure on our traditional media. And it is vital that our media showcases uh, our unique identity, we celebrated that yesterday, uh, culture and languages uh, because foreign content simply can't do this for us. Uh, if we want our future generations of New Zealanders to continue to benefit uh, from strong public media, then we must make changes to the way that public media currently operates. A Cabinet has agreed to complete a business case to examine the viability of establishing a new, fit-for-purpose public media entity that would operate alongside New Zealand On Air. This is an opportunity to design an agile, future-focused organisation that has a greater scale and is better placed to meet audience expectations to access content when, where and how they choose it, both now and in the future. The new proposed entity would draw on the skills and experience of both Radio New Zealand and Television New Zealand, but will be designed for a 21st century digital environment. And final decisions about the future of RNZ and TVNZ will be made once the business case is completed and considered by Cabinet. A core feature of the proposal is that New Zealand Oil On Air will continue to administer a contestable fund to ensure diverse public media content is provided on a range of platforms as they have done for the last 30 years. Any new entity uh, would have a clear public media mandate and we will aim to have a strong, unified culture and full independence from government in line with best practice around the world. It would have a mixed funding model with revenue from the Crown and non-Crown sources and would operate as a not-for-profit. But I want to make very clear that current commercial-free platforms will continue to be commercial-free. My intent is to put audiences 
at the heart of this work and we need public media that can serve our increasingly diverse communities and contribute to New Zealand being a connected, informed, diverse and cohesive country. This has been a long process, uh, but an important one. Uh, we started with a ministerial advisory group led by Michael Stiasny, who gave us advice and options on what they saw uh, to be the best fit uh, for public media. Then we worked with chief executives of TVNZ, RNZ, New Zealand On Air, the Ministry of Culture and Heritage and other key government departments, as well as media experts like former New Zealand editor, uh, New Zealand Herald editor Gavin Ellis, to develop a preferred approach and option. I'd like to thank TVNZ, RNZ and New Zealand On Air for the valuable input into this work and also those agencies and people who helped us. The next step is to prepare that detailed business case before Cabinet makes final decisions on whether to establish the new entity. The detailed business case will provide the opportunity to, to identify the best way to establish the new entity successfully, including costs and preferred operating model. We want to lay the strongest possible foundation for the success of our public media system, both in the short, long and medium term, uh, and uh, undergoing this business case will put us in the position to make a decision about the future of strengthening public media. Right, that, that's uh, all the prepared uh, statements I've got to make. I'm quite happy to open up the floor both to uh, the media that are here, but also the broadcasting school students. They might need a little bit more encouragement, so if anyone wants to start with any questions, happy to answer any. Well, I think, um, as I said, uh, a new entity will be able to be have, have the greater scale uh, and nimbleness, I think, to deal with some of the challenges that current media face. Um, that is changing platforms, changing uh, audience habits, uh, and importantly, I think, uh, getting good in, uh, get good uh, delivery from taxpayer money and investment in public uh, broadcasting. Um, we've uh, seen examples of that happening overseas where they have uh, you know, created new entities both out of traditional radio broadcasters and television broadcasters. I think what we saw definitely in terms of problem definition when the Ministerial Advisory Group uh, did its work is that on current settings, uh, given the challenges that all media have, uh, that both RNZ and TVNZ uh, would struggle to be able to um, adapt to some of the challenges that media have and uh, the proposal of a new entity, well, I think would give them both the scale uh, and the ability to weather some of those challenges and I think exciting opportunities to make sure that we've got some connectivity and some of how some of these important stories get told. So you're saying there would be no change to the status quo as far as advertising goes on RNZ. What about TVNZ? Well, that's what the business case will look at. What's the best way to structure how we could would con continue um, the commercial operations uh, that are current at the moment. Um, as I said, it's going to be a mixture of both Crown revenue and non-Crown, so in plain English that's government funding uh, and advertising. Um, but there, as I say, um, that new entity may have the ability to start um, broadcasting uh, on different platforms and there might be options within that too. So that's what the detailed business case will come back to us. If it comes back to us uh, in a positive light, then I'll put that before Cabinet to make a decision. So, Minister, there could be ramifications for the taxpayer in terms of how this could be structured? Well, I think it's obviously ramifications for the industry, um, but there are already ramifications for the taxpayer because, um, you know, taxpayers are funding the likes of Radio New Zealand. Uh, the in terms of looking at how TV Potentially, and that's what the business case will look at, exactly what that might be. Um, we've been given, uh, you know, some rough guesstimates, um, but we want the detailed business case about how this thing is, is best structured in order uh, to find out those kinds of implications. So you would expect it to be, you'd, you'd, there would be more money coming from the government for that TVNZ aspect of it, otherwise presumably no I point of change? I wouldn't presume that until the business case comes through. Minister, does the business case include one of the key elements facing journalism at the moment, which is trust. How do you quantify that? Because that is one of the things that needs to be rebuilt as much as an economic model. Yeah, I think we've already made a decision around some of the um, uh, less tangible things that are important around public media. Um, in this day and age, trust is extremely important. We need 
uh, a voice of truth in our media and um, the government is responsible for public uh, media and that's why we want to strengthen it as much as possible. Accessibility for the diverse communities of New Zealand is also an issue and I think um, we're already across the line in, in terms of that but the business case is going to come together to give us an idea of actually how that might be structured uh, and how it might wash its face in order for it uh, to be um, a, a solid public broadcaster. So you're actually talking values there. Sorry? You're talking values, a, a shift perhaps in what we traditionally see, some of the underpinning values in journalism? Look, um, public service media is about public good. Um, it's about uh, informing us, educating us, holding people like me to account um, and making sure we've got entities that continue to do that in the future is extremely important. Um, we're concerned, like most media companies, about the challenges that face all media companies about that right now, that are, we, uh, are the structures that are currently there able to do that for the next 10, 15, 25 years, which is why we see fit to propose these changes and go through the process of a business case to make sure that it can. Uh, wash its face in a non-profit sense. What would the proposed merger mean for the commercial sector? It's, well, I'm going to be very clear about um, our language here. It's a proposed new entity um, because the new entity would be able to take what's good of both of those uh, public broadcasters at the moment and build on that. Um, so uh, again, we'll wait for the detailed business case about what it might, effect it might have on advertisers. Um, but I've spoken to other commercial um, uh, broadcasters who have long been concerned about um, the likes of TVNZ's dominance and, and the advertising sphere. Um, and I guess when they when we come back uh, later this year and make a decision around uh, whether we go for the new entity or not, uh, they'll have a clear idea because it will be inf we will have a clear idea because it will be informed by the business case. Do you think that it could bring more stability? Sorry. Do you think it could bring more stability? I think the sector needs more stability because there's a hell of a lot of uncertainty at the moment. I think that's natural uh, in uh, a business sense, um, but when you are challenged by um, different platforms, advertising revenue being gouged, um, in, a, in a sense um, people's uh, audiences um, uh, lessening faith in some of the uh, media, then whether it's public media or commercial media, we need to make sure they are all strong. Um, you know, I've been a journalist uh, and now I have the privilege of being here uh, and holding people to me, uh, like me, to account is extremely important, whether we like it or not. Uh, and having, you know, uh, a healthy media environment is extremely important and the government has a big part to play in that. So I can't answer that question specifically right now. Um, but we are mindful of the effects of what we're doing uh, on the rest of the media market as well. Would you expect there'll be less people employed in this new entity than there are currently with Radio New Zealand and TVNZ? That would be preempting the business case. So that's not, we, we, you know, that is not our driving force here. Our driving force is to make sure that we do a better job uh, of every taxpayer dollar that is invested in public media. Because at the moment we don't think the system uh, is best fit for the next 25, 30 year, years beyond. When you refer to the new entity being nimble, what do you mean by that? What do you envision as nimble? Oh, look, I think there are one example was the different platforms that are popping up all the time that have the ability to deliver to different audiences. Um, I think we've seen uh, the likes of Radio New Zealand try and do things like that, but funding constraints or um, because they've traditionally been a radio company may have hamstrung them. Um, so a, a, nimp, a, you know, a, a larger scale yet nimble uh, public, a public broadcaster I hope would be able to do that. Like, you know, if you um, try and predict where the media landscape is in the next five years, everyone in the sector starts looking for a crystal ball. So we need to have something that is nimble and able to move quickly to keep telling the stories that need to be told. Uh, and I think challenging, uh, you know, the status quo in terms of how things are delivered um, and how we can do that. Is the new entity essentially RNZ Plus that Labor campaigned on? I think uh, that's vastly different, actually. Um, uh, I think... Um, People might say this is relatively bold, um, but I think there's been 
a combination of the environment changing and a lack of action, which I think has called for something to be done, not just for public broadcasting, but I think those in the commercial sector are looking for some certainty as well about how New Zealand's land, land, media landscape will look in the future. Has the government downscaled its plans for public broadcasting? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, uh, I think, you know, taking these kinds of actions uh, are not taken lightly. Um, we went through a range of options, um, but if we think about the kind of challenges that the sector will have and the demands of the audiences uh, that they will have in the future on how they want to watch stuff, how they want to read stuff and how they want to listen to stuff, um, that's going to change. How, how, exactly how that will change in the next five years, we don't know. Um, but if we don't have an entity, entity that is fit for purpose to be able to be nimble like that uh, and uh, make the best of the opportunities, um, uh, then I think we'll be, the media landscape as a whole will be um, lesser for it. Um, but I think I, the only thing I would say is, you know, change is hard, um, but I think there's some excitement uh, in this too. Um, I think we just need to work through some of the realities of that change and think about where things might be in 10 or 15 years and prepare ourselves for that. If the business case found in favour of this proposed entity, what sort of time frame would you look to it actually coming to fruition? Um, the officials have said that we'll ha we should have that business case uh, in six months' time. I'm not going to preempt a cabinet decision. I think they'll give it to us, we'll read it, I think we'll stew over it for a little bit. Um, but I think we've set ourselves a pretty clear course in what we think uh, might need to happen. Of course, um, I'm not preempting the business case. Talk Minister. about the business case, looking at the viability of this new entity. Is the cost, is that a key aspect in looking at whether it's viable? Absolutely. And so what else would you be looking at? Is that the, is that the only thing you'd be looking at? Well, the cost is structure. Um, I think the ability, you know, how we structure it in terms of um, delivery of content and how we deliver that to um, audiences is extremely important. Um, of course, you know, we've talked about the intangible things that public broadcasting or public media um, can bring to our country as well. So while we think we, we, we're, we're over the line on that, um, how we do it and making sure that we can do it in a sustainable way is obviously very important. Minister, different functions of journalism within a democracy. You've spoken about the watchdog function. Community voice is something that is drowned out in the current environment where everyone struggles. Does that get an emphasis or a renewed emphasis within a business case? Um, I think the ability to be more places will probably one of the th things that um, they'll look at. Um, there are other things that um, the government is doing in terms of trying to get uh, reintegrate some of that community voice um, through a lo local democracy reporting pilot that's um, uh, been rolled out at the moment um, to try and um, put a little more emphasis on that. Uh, again, it's um, very uh, locally focused. Um, but again, you know, I think it's not just what you're doing, but the depth of what you are doing um, that we're trying to uh, make sure that we can capitalise on in terms of the public good for public, serv uh, public um, service media and having that pu strong public, uh, me uh, public media mandate. It's hard to get out. Kia ora. Yeah. The 12 community access media entities are also part of the public media um, environment and part funded by New Zealand On Air. How might they be affected by this proposed new entity? I'm thinking especially around regional. Yeah, thanks for that question, Nikki. <laughs> um, look, I, I hope that especially um, with uh, the likes of Radio New Zealand as we know it now, um, and whatever that operation might look like in the future, that some greater integration of especially around sharing of content might be able to happen and the ability for some of those community access broadcasters, if that's what we're still calling them, uh, might be able to feed into some of that content. Um, I think what a lot of concern from punters is, and I've got to be careful because um, you know, programming decisions aren't ours and you don't want to listen or watch Chris Farfoy TV. Um, but I think um, making sure that some of that community voice and local voice uh, is strengthened, I would hope, is something that we could do as a, as a result of this. Does the new entity have a charter? Absolutely. It will have a very strong public media mandate. And it would be one charter for the entity rather than one charter for RNZ, one charter for TVNZ? Well, if we have a new entity, it will be one entity, so yeah. Minister, the, the, the elephant in the room, I think, is the funding. 
Um, Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I hear what you're saying about scalability and nimbleness in the new entity and, and efficiencies being created. It, it seems to me it's possible that as a result of this business case, there may be no more money spent on public media. Look, I'm not going to preempt budget decisions or the business case because my career will be short. Um, but um, if the business case comes back and has proposals and they are kind of central to the new entity getting off the ground, then we'll have to consider it. Um, there's also um, the intervening period between uh, now and any new entity um, coming to fruition. Um, and, you know, as, as I've said before, um, uh, all broadcasters, all media are finding it tough. Um, Radio New Zealand has, I think, made that clear and uh, forecasts for TVNZ profits um, don't look uh, too good over the next three or four years because of the way that um, the advertising market is shaping up at the moment. So that's why the business case is quite crucial. What do you make of the creation of the new youth music station and the, the cutting back of the concert? Is the government going to intervene? Uh, we met with um, Radio New Zealand Management and some board members last week and they told us um, their intent. Um, without saying too much, I think it's um, we made some concerns clear to them uh, at the time of about some of the aspects of their proposal. Uh, I think one of the big challenges that um, Radio New Zealand has and I think nearly every public broadcaster that I have engaged with is that they are struggling to attract younger audiences. Um, so I think this is obviously for them uh, one way to try and uh, tick all the boxes of the diverse audiences that they need to check in with. Um, we're looking into some ways that uh, we might be able to mitigate some of the concerns that have been expressed by um, loyal listeners of Concert FM um, and I don't want to get to too much of that detail but we heard, um, we expressed some concern and we're working on some issues that we hope will mitigate some of that. So the government may say Concert FM? I, I wouldn't build up too much expectation. I'm working on some, uh, on a plan to mitigate some of the issues and concerns that we raised with Radio New Zealand last week. Are you concerned that this new entity could become a political football with the National Party gearing up to campaign on not having a go ahead? Look, whether we, it will be a political football whether we like it or not. Um, so the only political thing I think I'll say here is, well, where's their alternative? Um, uh, we sat and watched uh, for nine years when um, TVNZ 6 and 7 were shut down uh, and froze, uh, funding was frozen. Um, and if they don't like what we've got, then what have they got? Um, because our doors are being beaten down on a regular basis by a lot of people in the media market wanting uh, a plan to show um, some stability and sustainability for the media market. Um, and while this is not everything, um, it's a big part of that puzzle um, and, you know, if they've got an alternative then we'd like to see it because they certainly haven't expressed it to us. The solution to that could be to move faster and get the new entity underway before the election? We've been criticised for moving too fast and we've been criticised for moving too slow, which to me says we've probably got it about right. What happens if the business case is rejected by Cabinet? Do you think there has to be changes in the two organisations? I'm a relentlessly positive person and <laughs> I'll wait for the business case to come back um, before getting too negative about things. I think, you know, we've worked on this for a long time. Um, I think it's pretty clear that we took a Cabinet paper to um, Cabinet before the end of last year and they wanted some I's dotted and T's crossed, so we went away and did this. Um, again, I'm very passionate about making sure uh, we have a strong public media in, the, in this country for the future, not just for the people who want to make a living uh, in that sector, uh, but also for the audiences, because we need to nurture them with the kind of stuff that we want uh, New Zealanders uh, to see and give us a sense of our own identity. Um, and we've got a responsibility, or I've got a responsibility as Broadcasting Minister, to try and set that up. It's a privilege, but I, we, you know, I, I want to get it right. John? <laughs> Do you think you're going to achieve that with your cabinet? I'm relentlessly positive, but I'm not going to be preemptive. And is the business case coming back with options, or is it just looking at one one idea and telling you what how that how that would cost and? What We've asked um, the people who are doing the business case to look at the option of a new media entity. Uh, we were given some options. We settled on the business case being done on that option alone. Do you listen to Concert FM? Not regularly. Uh, how regularly? Not regularly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Any like, indication on 
what does that mean? I don't think I'd show up on their ratings. But that's not necessarily the, the issue. I'm not necessarily the target audience. Um, but let's just say that there's been a fair bit of feedback over the last 48 hours. Some of it has been directed to me and some of it has been directed to Radio New Zealand. Um, and as I say, um, we've outlined some concerns to them last week and we're working on it. Has that feedback at all changed your position? Well, it's not my position. Uh, it's Radio New Zealand's position. And I just want to be very clear that they are, by law, independent in their programming and operational decisions. You don't want me messing with that. There's, one, there's only one thing worse than doing nothing, and that is doing something. Has there been disagreement between coalition partners on how fast and how big to go on this? I wouldn't say that. I know there was some reporting about that last week, um, but it was um, dotting of I's and crossing of T's, really. So I think, um, as the Deputy Prime Minister outlined late last year, um, New Zealand First has a position on the direction around public um, service media. Um, and now it's quite clear that we're setting a path and we've got to get through the business case before we make a final decision, but um, I wouldn't say that, no. Were you initially hoping to pass legislation under urgency? That was one of the options to see if we could get things moving, uh, but you know, I guess that was one of the things that we decided wasn't necessary. Um, it, um, I think we need to be clear at some stage, um, because both TVNZ and Radio New Zealand have their own pieces of legislation, that will be an issue to deal with. Um, but the most immediate issue is to making sure this business case can get done. Did uncertainty in the sector contribute to your decision to leave journalism? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't want to get into that, because <laughs> ruffle a few feathers in the room. <laughs> Minister, you've mentioned diversity several times. What are the opportunities here for ethnic minority audiences or broadcasters? Look, I think the different platforms that might be able to come about. I think um, traditionally we've had mainstream um, radio channels and TV channels. Um, the ability for uh, the likes of Māori or Pacific or other ethnic audiences or other parts of the community that might be able to have a voice on a different platform because of the scale or again the, the nimbleness of uh, a different entity might allow some of those other voices to come through. Um, and uh, I don't think there was a question earlier on about different parts of the country too and I think we might be able to see or hear stories from different parts of the country if we use the resources in a different way. What about New Zealand on air funding? Uh, as I said at the outset, um, uh, there isn't, in terms of how it operates, there, doesn't, there is no intent to change that. It's been working well for the last 30 years. There's always questions about New Zealand on air funding, which is always, are you going to give them more? And my answer will be, you have to wait till budget time to hear that. Can I just have two more questions, please? Do you we'll anticipate we'd see a scale down of the number of ads that would be playing on TVNZ? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I think that's one of the things that the business case would look at. Again, uh, the entity has to be sustainable. That would be my response to that. Um, so that's why um, the mix of both um, Crown uh, and non-Crown funding is important. Um, I think um, we've certainly met with people from the advertising sector because they're um, interested in this, um, because they're important. Um, platforms for them to get um, their messages out to. Um, so um, I would think that the business case would be able to give us some certainty about what kind of level of revenue they would need uh, in order to, to run an operation that's sustainable. Minister, are you looking at the funding um, sort of proportions that other countries give? New Zealand taxpayer pays very little relative to other countries towards public service media and is it a cultural shift that needs to encourage politicians, let alone the public, that that is, it's a good place to put money? Look, that's one of the things that I think that is the conundrum in amongst this. Um, I think a lot of our time so far has been looking at the structural issues within public media um, and that question uh, I think we'll have to get with, dealt with at some stage if you look at um, uh, our spending uh, per capita um, compared to others. Um, but we do think that, you know, first came off the rank uh, is making sure that the system is fit for purpose. Um, we think we can get some benefits of or, or in and around a new entity uh, about the types of coverage um, that we get and the types of media that we will want in the future. Um, so um, I would ask for some patience and let us try and uh, do this piece of work 
um, while we're also thinking about other issues such as that. Any thoughts about, Sorry. Any thoughts about taxing Facebook and Google more, considering that they're behind the problems with advertising Yeah, we're, we're still waiting for some um, movement from counterparts in Europe about what their attitude to some of those things might be before uh, Minister Nash, from a revenue perspective, um, would do there. So that's a it's an issue that's raised constantly um, and probably um, best answered by Minister Nash uh, in terms of what his plans are. Um, but as Broadcasting Minister, we're wary of the effect that um, uh, those platforms are having on advertising revenue. It's a, it's a big issue for a lot of um, those in the commercial sector. Well done, Jeff. Got that third question. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Minister. Thank you very Thanks, much. Sorry. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.